Okay, got, got everybody's attention again. A uh, friend of ours, uh, Craig Norman from Los Angeles, uh, an architect and a, a friend. He's moved out here. He's got a project going on. And uh, we try to make sure when people come around, they have some idea what some people from the U.S. are doing here in terms of projects and programs and what's possible and uh, what is interesting. So turn it over to Craig. All right. Hello, everyone. Okay, my name is Craig Norman. Um, I uh, came, as Jerry said, from Los Angeles, but I came to Ghana in a very different way. When I came to Ghana, um, it was in 1998. So you all probably thought I was like 15 or 16 at that time. But <laughs> That ain't that funny. That was that big of a joke. No, but really, I came um, after I had been in business for 15 years in the U.S. I um, came to Ghana. Uh, I had went through, you know, you know, you go through your personal issues, and I went through some personal issues. Ended up in a divorce, and after the divorce, said, "Let me go." to graduate school. Now, I already had been in business for 15 years, been an architect and a land planner, and I decided that the thing that was holding me up from my goal, which was land development, was the fact that I wasn't able to get the financing that was readily available to, ex to developers because of various reasons. We all know why. Okay. I in, I decided to go and get my MBA, which I did, and we ended up uh, taking courses in commerce, um, um, currencies. And in taking the course in currencies, we found that you can take a dollar and then invest in various currencies, the yen, the, all of these currencies, and when you put it out, when it comes back around, it's worth a dollar fifty. And I said, this is interesting. And I went to the professor and explained um, my situation, said, I need money for fi financing a land development project. He said, well, that's good. He said, but if you look at the African currencies, you will be blown away at how it works. Which I said, OK. And I started doing research on the African currency. At that time, Ghana who has, has since changed its currency but at that time um, 1997 it was 2,500 CD to one dollar okay now since uh, I said we don't take no five beta kappa to figure this out that I can fund that type of development with those type of exchange rates out of my pocket. I don't need a bank. I can do it on my own. Then the question became, how do you get to Ghana? You know, where is Ghana? I was, you know, in college, some of you may have been this person. You know, I was one of the, I was the big frat man, you know, A5, <laughs> big frat guy in college. And I did not function with the Afrocentric group who knew more about Africa and whatnot. No, I was too busy, you know, marching with the brothers. But um, I really did not know a lot um, about it. So I started checking. I found out about Ghana and found out that the United States Peace Corps at that time had a program where you, if you're qualified to join the Peace Corps, they opened a business arm called Small Enterprise Development. You come there, they put you in a village for two years, and they give you a stipend to live off of. That stipend was five times the currency of what it took to live. And I said, this will be a good way to do research. Remember, I just got a divorce, so I was free as a bird. So I said, okay. I joined, got accepted, came here, and was immediately put in the Volta region and did a project there. The project was a tourism project, and this tourism project was like this. 
when I got there, they were making, um, what was it, six times, $72 a year, 72 US dollars a year for their tourism attraction, for their tourist attraction. When I left after year one, it turned out to be 6,000 US dollars per month that they were making for their tourist attraction. That won us the Ghana Tourism Board Attraction of the Year. And I got a little, uh, little bit of focus was put on, on black Americans coming to Ghana through the Peace Corps to try to help the development of Ghana because we had to create a viable, sustainable income stream. These are all terms you all know in your life but we had to create that here. So we did that and they put me over all the projects in Ghana, all the Peace Corps projects in Ghana. And that meant everything. That meant the wood carvers up in Abri and those places. It meant the um, uh, textiles up north in uh, Tamale and Bolga. It meant the um, uh, actually, the Kente weavers and Bonriri up Kamasi Way and so forth. Just all the, the Peace Corps sponsored project. It went, they touched <clears throat> in the areas of Akwatia and Achimada. Those who don't know those areas, you may have heard of them. That's where the diamonds are. Those are the diamond areas. I didn't work on those, on projects there, but there were projects going on that I had to go and visit. And being a businessman, once I got there and saw <laughs> what was available, I quickly decided to make some more trips there so I could try to do and, and um, see what was there. I did. So anyway, at the end of the day, when I left Peace Corps 2002, 2000, 2001, when I left Peace Corps, I, am, I did just what you guys are going to do when you leave here. You are going to give back to the U.S. Let me rephrase. I went back to the U.S. And went back to, you know, I had to rest I'm restructuring my business. Remember divorce, so no money. So I'm, restru <laughs> I'm restructuring my businesses and preparing. And it hit me. It's like, why? Why am I fighting this uphill battle when in Ghana, West Africa, where I've been for the last two years, there are opportunities that I can afford without going to the bank. I can afford this. Now, that's what I said. That is what you guys are going to say when you get back. And Bomani has taken you all over. As he takes you, you're going to see things that you're going to say, why isn't this here? And the reason why is because you haven't put it there yet. It's there. Why isn't that there? Well, you haven't done that. It's available. For me, being in land development, I said, why don't we have a master plan community in Ghana, West Africa? At that time, we're talking about 2005 now. At that time, there were none, there were no estate development projects that were all inclusive at all, even in Accra. The only thing you had was, um, um, what is it, Legon, East Legon. That's what you had, but that's not a master plan community. That are just a bunch of lots that were sold and people with money bought them and built bigger houses but there is no concept of all inclusive um, from the design standpoint it just wasn't that there so i said that might be my niche in ghana i did this in the u.s i did it all over did it all over california i've done it all over um uh, what midwest 
uh, south. I've done this all over the U.S. So doing this in Ghana is no problem. So I went and I bought, oh, well, 10 acres is the smallest you can do. 10 um, U.S. acre is, um, you know, smallest you can do, in my opinion. So I did 15 acres. 15 acres. And oh, by the way, acres are different. A Ghana acre is 40,000 square feet. A U.S. acre is 43,560 square feet, which is another thing you're going to have to learn if you plan to do anything in Ghana. What you have to know the Ghana standard and the U.S. standard. And your U.S. standard that you know you must keep in mind, I'm not in the U.S. This is their country. If you're going to do something here, you must meet, okay, the standard in the country that you're in. Where you're coming from will allow you to beat that standard, but you must understand that it exists. You must know that it exists. And then whatever you do will come out and show you in even a more positive light than what um, we've done. So what I did was I bought the acreage uh, and then did the subdivision map. You guys in the States all know what subdivisions are, right? You know, and then you do the model home. And then you go and look at the model and they said, this model can fit on that lot. Well, we take it one step further. We have a vocational school. We have an elementary school. We have commercial facilities, commercial stores, um, uh, strip commercial, like what you would think of in the US, strip commercial. We have uh, recreational facilities. As I said, we're just working on the jazz club now. Um, Rick, um, we have entertainment, we have tennis courts, you know, the club hop, the whole bit. So now there's no need. Uh, we have clinic, um, we have the clinic in there. Um, and really, technically, you can be in Ghana and enjoy all that Ghana has to offer. Now I'm going to say something that you guys have to understand, Ghana is Ghana, Africa is Africa. Africa is a continent, Ghana is not a continent, Ghana is a country, okay? So, all your friends are going to say, and you know it, and you probably say it too, are going to say, you, what did you do in Africa? Well, what you did was in Ghana. It wasn't in, it wasn't in the whole of Africa, it's Ghana. Africa has 54 countries. Ghana is one of 54. So the point that I'm making is that you still have all the experiences of Ghana, West Africa. But when you come home, you can come home to an environment that you are comfortable with and familiar with. And that was the hook of my development. That is the hook. You are in quote Africa, you are in Ghana, you have all the experiences of that, but there's a time you can drive in gates to your gated community, go in, and you can be in an environment that you're familiar with. What does that mean? That means you're not going to have cows running across the yard, you're not going to have goats here and there um, running through, you're not going to have roads too narrow to park on and bouncing all over the way. You're not going to have that. That's what we're dealing with. Okay, so that's the project. So what we did was develop the project. The project is still in development right now. Those of you who have um, internet on your phone can go to the website. And the website is www stadiumviewestates.com. I'll say it again. www.stadiumviewestates. 
E-S-T-A-T-E-S. Make sure you put that S on stadiumviewestates.com. All right. Yes, www.stadiumviewestates.com. And in that, you can see the project that's being built. Now, having said that, having said that, there's one thing that we have to be real about. As I said before, and Bomani has asked, he said, well, you're, you're doing business in Ghana, you've been doing business in Ghana for a while. And I touched on the fact that Ghana is Ghana and they have their business, and U.S. is U.S. and they have their business, and Ghana is not the U.S. and the U.S. is not Ghana, so if you come thinking you're gonna do business the way you do business in the U.S., you are gonna fail, and you're gonna fail quickly, okay? But there are things you need to know. So, for instance, if you in, to start anything here, first thing you would need to do is to register your business. And you go down to the um, registrar, which is um, in what they call um, uh, Accra Central, Registrar General, you go there and you can register your company. Companies here carry the limited name, LTD. So if, if Newark here was gonna start a company here, you call it Newark LTD, okay? That would be the name of your company. You fill out your documents. Now, you will need, now people are gonna say you don't have to do this, but I'm telling you, you will need to have a Ghanaian partner. A Ghanaian partner. Doesn't have to be 50-50 or whatever, whatever. You need a Ghanaian partner. And that Ghanaian partner that you need, you let him or her go in and register your company. Because if you go in Newark LTD to register your company, you are gonna catch hell before you get out. Your Ghanaian partner goes in to register the company. He does that, pay his CDs, walk out, and you're in business. Your name is still all over the company. Your resume, the everything is still intact. It's still yours, okay? But in this country, even though we speak of African-Americans, we're African-Americans, okay? We're all of that in a bag of chips. They don't see it that way. They see you as a foreigner. They see you as a foreigner. Doesn't say everyone, but when you start conducting business and putting money on the table, you're a foreigner, okay? So you need to have a partner. They call it a counterpart. You need a Ghanaian counterpart to help you through the maze. And it is a maze. But then after you register your company, you got that. Then you got to go open a bank account. Now, remember that I mentioned the Ghanaian counterpart? Okay. That's who is going to open your bank account. You want to know why? Once I tell you this, you're going to say, oh, yeah, that's right. We need a Ghanaian counterpart. Because when you, I've been using you as an example. I hope you don't mind. I'm cool. <clears throat> okay. He says, "Put me on the map." Put you up. There we go. There you go. When when, when my Newark brother so walks that... into Echo Bank or Cal Bank or whatever and says, "I want to op register this company," and you got all your little documents here, <clears throat> they'll say, "Fine." I'm sorry. I want to open an account in the name of this company. They will say, "Fine," and they will say, "That will be fifty thousand U.S. dollars." to open this account. And then you'll, you'll go, <coughs> what? Yes, 50,000, you look in your wallet, you, you know, you fake like you got it, right? <laughs> so no, I don't need that. I, I don't have that, okay? Your Ghanaian partner comes in and says, I need to open an account for this business. And they say, okay, Kwame, Kofi, whatever, it'll be, 50 Ghana CDs. <laughs> CDs. Dollars. Okay? That makes you know good and well now that let me step back. Open this account. It'll be open. 
you'll have your business registered, you'll have your account open, and life will be good. Now you're ready to work your magic. Now you're ready to do those things that brought you here. Now, as I said, I'm sure some of you here are um, married, okay, uh, with, with Ghanaian husbands or wives or um, the like. Get you a Ghanaian con counterpart. If it's a husband or a wife, it's even better because you can trust them, okay? Because you can trust them. A lot of things happen here that you won't believe would happen to you because you're saying, I am home. My people won't cheat me, I am home. I was in the diaspora, I was away for 400 years, I've returned home, my people, will never cheat me. Get that out of your head, okay? And the one thing, if you, if you take anything I say here to heart, and it is this, the, what you would not take in the States, okay? What you would not take in the States, do not take here. Don't come with the attitude that, oh, the people here are poverty, they're poor. I don't mind if you cheat me. I'll give you a few <laughs> extra CDs or whatever. Do not do that. Okay, I hope that's on the tape, uh, Bomani, because when they do, then later on they'll be making the tape saying just what I'm saying. Don't do that because it will happen in every walk of your life, everything you do. Everybody has a brother, sister, cousin, uncle, somewhere in a high place that they will consider that can get you through the maze if you just pay them a little bit of money on the, on the down low, okay? If you just do that and you will end up doing it again and again and again before you get the one thing you were trying to get done, done. This you have to trust me on. But now, let's say, now you're ready to buy you a piece of land. Um, and I'll bring it, I'll bring it home. Uh, you're ready to buy you a piece of land. Those of you who are coming here to, like, like Jerry, for instance, look at this. How many places in the U.S. can we afford this close to the ocean, sea breeze, get to see sun rise and set, and all of that? I mean, I know we can't say Newark, we gotta use a new person, cause Newark, we can't use him for this example. Cause there yeah, ain't no water there, okay? But the point is, is that if you come to retire, if you come to relax and all of that, this is a great place for it. You can afford it, you can afford to live here, you can even afford to deal with some of the shenanigans that go on. What I was telling you before is all about business. Here. But if you're coming to relax, settle down, you can do it. You can do it here. Um, and it will be fine. But when you buy land here, when you choose to buy land here, there is no 30 year mortgage. Okay? So that concept of 30 year mortgage is gone. Here, it's an indenture, which means it's a lease. <laughs> Foreigners, I think, are um, 75 years on the lease. Um, uh, and so you get an indenture, you, you get that. When you get, when you buy land here, generally, depending on your deal-making skills, generally, you're going to pay 100% of the money at a go. If not, it'll be 50% of the money. You will pay in the beginning. And then your indenture comes. When your indenture comes in your name, you'll pay the balance. And then you'll have to first go to the lands commission and check to see if the person selling you the land actually owns it. Okay? That's going to be your first challenge. And if they own it, you're happy. Okay, if they don't own it, walk away. Whatever excuse they say, 
tell them, say it walking. All right? Because we're not doing that. But okay. So you get the owner uh, of the land. You get your indenture. Next step is survey and mapping division. They call it SMD. When this indenture is done, your name should be registered at the survey office with the SMD division for that property, that survey and mapping division. Okay? When that is done, now you got your name, now you're in the system, your, your name is in the system, it's on this piece of land, and everything's good, and you can relax for a minute. The next step you need is to get your title. Okay, is to get your title. When getting your title, you have to take it to the next level. And there are foreigners here um, that have owned land for 10, 15 years and have not got their title yet. Okay, because there's always somebody else to bribe. There's always some other excuse why your title it cannot be uh, granted at this point. Eventually you get it. And when you get it, that's it, you're done. You don't need it. You can function with your indenture for the rest of your life. You can sell, you can do whatever you want. But if you want certified title, and basically what that means is somebody ever came to you and said, if this brother came to Newark and said, that's my land, get away, get off my land. You, if you have title, you go to court and put that on the table and the judge tells my brother, go on, go on away, go find somebody else. He's good. Short of that, you and your indenture will be able to carry you through, on through whatever it is you need to do. Now I was getting the sign that, look, we're gonna have to wrap this up. But if there are any questions or comments or whatever, I've, I've been through a lot of the things here. I've, a lot of the business opportunities I've done, a lot of uh, obviously the land process I've uh, done as well. And we wanna see as many of you here as we can because Ghana, since the beginning of time, this is what we got. Chinese have come in and done all sorts of development, okay? Where's the African-American development? Where's our project? Well, when enough of us are here, our project <coughs> will pop up and we'll be as uh, well known for our type of projects and development and we will really be home at that point. So Bomani, it was, I can wrap it up right here if you wanna to go to questions or whatnot. Yeah, if you have any more key points, I can place them. Uh, beyond that, I'm trying to get some more uh, questions and interaction. Uh, okay. So yeah, let, let, oh. me, let me just say something. We're, um, it's not, the time issue is really more on you, you know what I mean? So. Yeah, I just uh, want to you know, have people just yeah, dialogue yeah, a little so bit. I don't want you to feel excessively rushed, but because some of you want to see the rest, of course. And it is a bit hot down there, I have to tell you. Yeah. But some of you want to see the rest of the wall, and, and that's okay. You know, the time got staggered. So, well, Monty, you can give us a better idea. Oh, no, you we can in, do that in 20 minutes. So oh, we'll yeah, we're good. Ready. Once we finish here, we're good. So, okay, uh, we'll, just, so we'll have time. Yeah, we just want to make sure that, you know, while Craig Norman is there, we no, get no, some I good mean, questions from him. I said, I don't want you to feel like you're artificially rushed. It's really more on your schedule. So. Oh, yeah, I got it. But, you know, we keep All on right. flowing. All right, cool. Okay. So, yeah. so, you want to come You want to come down a little bit? I don't, I don't have to understand. Um, I don't need to understand. But when you talked about this uh, counterpart going to the bank, I give them this money. Say I have fifty thousand. I'm I can give it to them. Open an account. When do they put my name on the account? Right then. Um, right then. I don't have both. to be there. No, both of your names. You're gonna get papers, and when they fill out the papers, you'll fill out yours and sign your portion. I so, have to be there. Is what I'm asking. Be there. Okay. The right yeah. There too? Yeah. You got fifty grand in your pocket, mm -hmm. or whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. You'll, yes, you should be there to fill out the form, 
and sign your name and make your deposit just like you normally do anywhere else. Make your deposit. The county the card is opening up. I thought you said in their name. Uh, no, no, no. No, there they will. They can be a part of uh, a close assigner to your account. Okay. The only reason why you have a counterpart is if you want to do it for less than fifty thousand. If you want to do fifty thousand, then bypass all of that. Just walk in yourself and say, "I want to open an account." Okay, but to start for someone else, a foreigner, you have to deposit 50000 up That is the minimum that a foreigner has to deposit. Some banks, it's 100000 Okay. Yes. Okay, and that's U.S. dollars. Okay. All right. Can the counterpart open it up without you even being there? And you put your name and everything on the documentation? And sign all the paperwork? Yeah. Now, let me say this. For my bank account, I... <clears throat> had my wife open, she's Ghanaian, but it's in my business name. The account is in my business name. Um, and then she's also on it. So that was how that worked. I didn't have to be there for that. I did not, but I, to alluding to this lady's question, I would not give my counterpart 50,000 and not be standing right there saying, okay, how did this, how did this work? So, if anything, I would have to like, if I don't want to be there and I want my counterpart to take care of everything, I will put them on the, the limit, the LTD, yes. as, a, as a member or something like That's that. Right. But That's like exactly a lawyer, but correct. a tier deal. Just a member, right. like you said. And they can handle everything they need to handle for me while I'm not yes. there. Yes, yes. So, okay, can now. I add to that? Yes. And I First off, your answer is yes, you're on the right track. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Uh -huh. That counterpart, yeah, it's a lot rougher. A signer on the account? No, no, no. Let's get that. That's a very good question. The question was that if you open an account with someone, do they have to be a signer for you to take money out? Okay, that goes to your registration documents of the company. If you put them in as a co signer, then they are then they would. If your documents don't say that, that your name? Dwayne. Dwayne. Yeah. If the documents say Dwayne is all like mine do. Mine says C.A. Norman Limited, my company, and underneath it says Craig Norman, my name. Although my wife is on it, she doesn't go and She's authorized yes. to do bits to, 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 on your behalf to get things going, exactly. but she's not authorized to, to touch any type of money situation, any type of money, uh, uh, de uh, what is that, a decision, you know what I mean? Correct. You're the one who's, I don't know what exactly. that gotcha. that. And, and that's in the corporate documents. Documents, exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good deal. Everything going smooth. Um, um, one second. Okay, she said if everything goes smooth, how long does this process take? Are we in Ghana? A day? Wait, wait, are we in Ghana? Yes, forever. That's your answer. No, okay. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's not going to, yeah, there are going to be a lot of go see this person, go to that person, go to that person, but it, it won't be, um, um, I have no, you won't be shocked and how long it takes, but it's nowhere near like what you're used to sitting at B of A. So you have to prepare yourself to be here in country to start moving a certain time and such as that. Oh, to open an account and so do that? You start from find land and registering your company all the oh, way okay. down. So you want to be here two months, three months? Yeah, do that, do okay. that. Say 90 days okay. and everything is done. Okay, but let me tell you now, Bomani brings tours here. I don't know how long they stay, but we had a tour that we brought here. Um, I won't plug my tour on his video, but we had a tour where we bring people, and the first thing we do is go to the bank. By the time the tour is over, they have filled out all the documents and whatnot, and if they have the money, they can turn it in and we become their representative till they get here. Okay. Good move, good move. Yeah. Right. Uh, a smooth move.
um, like uh, on my account, okay, say I had one child, five children or whatever, POD, pay on debt. If something happened to me after I own this account, or this counterpart own this account, even with my name on it, something happens to me, how do I know that my daughter or my son, my child is going to be able to get whatever's in that account? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, that counterpart? Okay, no, okay, good, good question. The question is, how does she know that if something were to happen to her, that the money in her account will, account will go to the people you have identified in your will? Then in your company documents, you will reference that. In your company documents, you will reference that, number one. Number two, now I'm just, I'm not a lawyer, but I'm, thinking of how it works with us is add your children onto your company. Yes. Documents apostille or just a notary? It's what we say. Are the documents apostille or an official notary? Oh, okay, yeah, you have to have a witness. No, no official notary. You just have to have a witness to sign. So are those documents stamped and considered the originals, the date of process? Yeah, yes, yes. And and everybody gets a copy and it's held in their records forever. Okay. For a long time. I'm saying forever, but you know, they held in their initially. Yes. You are you talking land documents? No, no. Or bank process everything. Okay. Well now those are two different things. Bank is are yours forever. Land no. No, okay, but land, land, he, uh, Duane mentioned, said, oh, for as long as the lease. That is correct, but in your lease, you have the renewal part of your lease. Another 75? Another 75, right. So, so does it start at 75 with that current landowner that you're negotiating with? Okay, that's, a, wow. You guys got all the right questions. The question was, does it start at 75? So when you get your lease, do you have 75 from that point forward? The answer is yes. Okay. Now, now, when you get your title, then you get to say, okay, your name is? Deborah. Deborah gets her title in Deborah's name, and she now wants to sell to Duane, she can, now you have title, she can say, Duane, you get one year, I don't, you ain't really, you ain't, <laughs> you ain't what I thought it was, so you get one year, okay, no, but you get to name the term at that point, yeah. yes, when you have certified title. Is that, is that a title insurance policy? Oh, wow, we back to U.S., you mean the... The just, altar, the, the name might be different, but no, we're looking at the process. No, no, itself. it's no such thing as a title insurance policy here. <laughs> now, I, I'm a real estate broker in California, so I just, when you said that, my I'm mind went to the ALTA policy and the CLTA policy. But no, they don't have that here. Okay. Um, and one thing I will mention that I hate to say this, but you have to know the truth. There. You can expect challenges to your land. That's why you gotta be here. You have to be here. You cannot buy your land and then go back to the US and wait till your 12 year old gets out of college and now here's her land in Africa. In Africa, right? In Ghana. When you come back, somebody will have built a house on your land, be living there, and enjoying every bit of it. Okay, now I'm gonna tell you a horror story that you're gonna tell me. I'm telling you a story. You're gonna say, um, what is it in tree? You're gonna say, oh boy, oh boy, meaning I'm lying. <laughs> okay. A gentleman here whose name will go nameless, but he's here right now to deal with this issue. 10, 15 years ago, bought land in a very prime area of Ghana. That area is called um, Abri. Okay, Abri. It's on the mountain. You got views of everything. Okay. He got a caretaker to oversee his land. He bought, I think it was um, 10 acres. Okay. So he bought 10 acres. 
got a caretaker to oversee his land. He paid the caretaker each month. Okay? So life is good. The caretaker said, hey, I have a wife and I have family. Um, I don't know if I can keep doing this. So the man said, okay. He built him a house on that land. The caretaker then said, you know what? I still have to travel back and forth. So he said, okay, and bought him a car. Okay? You with me? Yeah. Okay. The man did not come back. He just did all of this. And, you know, every now and then he made one come for two weeks, say, yeah, I still got a land caretaker. Yeah, you do. One day he comes back and finds out that there are two mansions, mansions, not house, not hut, mansions on his land and another under construction. He comes in and goes ballistic, find out these are some Chinese people who come in and he's saying, they done came and stole my land. I don't play that. This ain't gonna happen this way. Find out the caretaker sold it to them. They all had documents on the land. Caretaker picked up left, they ain't seen him since. In the car he bought. Uh, he got and this going is going on him. right now. I'm not telling you something that happened a long time ago. I'm telling you something. If you go down, if Bomani takes the bus and go down to the court, you may see this case going on right now. Black American brother out of uh, New York that this happens to right now. So if you buy land, and that's one of the pluses of buying in our project, Stadium View Estates, okay, that you never have to worry about. You don't have to worry about that because we deal with that for you. We stop all of that. That has to come through us for some craziness like that to happen. But when you're on your own and you're in the motherland, you're African-American, I'm back to Africa, I'm in the motherland, I'm going to do all I can to make all our poor brothers have all the great things they need. This is what can and will happen to you. So that's just an example on, on this land deal, on buying land. So if you do buy land, and you <clears throat> buy it on your own. I mean, obviously with me, you'd be buying into a project. I'm not the only project. I like to say I'm the best, but I'm not the only, but they have others. When you're buying into a project, you're, you're safer. Yeah. But if you're gonna go out and just buy on your own, then you're gonna have to be prepared for those type of things to happen. Okay. Uh I just, I mean, you know, my neighbors, you know, people talk about me in uh, Mississippi, Michigan, wherever. I don't trust anyone. Not the Lord. So, they tell me, oh, you got to trust somebody. No, I don't. So, my thing is, I don't know anybody from anybody. I know of the money because of my guardian and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, and I have money. I can just give somebody money. I've saved. I, you know, what? I don't understand why I would just give somebody money to do a project for me. I, I just don't. And then it's 75. If I'm 75 now, and I got to wait 75, 75 years, Whoa. I'm close to it. I mean, I'm just yeah, saying. It's but I'm, well, I'm, seven, I'm close to it. But I'm just saying. The thing is, why would I do it? I mean, I would do it for my daughter and try to help, you know, and stuff like that. But I don't see why I would want to do it if, you know. If you got those risks. Yeah, because yes. those are the risks that are here. Yes. That is what you have to be aware of before you put one penny right. in. I would hate for you to put your money in and find out the hard way like so many people right. have done. Right. You need to know and be aware of what can possibly happen. There are ways around it, you know, but still, you're going to have to trust somebody. Okay, yes, it just said talk more about my project. I, that I love. Okay, but I'm going to grab this. Can you? Dot com. Yeah, that's me. Yes. 
Okay. Yeah, I think I got two of these. And family, our brother Craig Milman is going to show you some some views. Just take a little peek through there and see what we're working with. And um, Duane is it? okay. And you can just we, can we talk from here? Okay, we'll talk from here. Okay, this is my project. It is not complete. But this is what it will look like. Were you able to pull it up? Uh, I'm trying. We okay. Have internet service here. Okay. All right. This is what it will look like. We are. This is the phase we're working on right now. Right. This is actually the vocational school. These are the custom home lots. These are the model homes. Okay, they will fill out. You see this yellow part? That's that. This is this. Okay, we started construction here. We're in construction here. We've sold most of these. We have four left. Four left. Matter of fact, one of our landowners was right here. He just left. Um, no, the gentleman that uh, had the, I think he had, oh, there he is, right there. Um, Ron, raise your hand. He, he bought this plot right there, and we're, he's starting his construction now. But we have the swimming pool, we have the tennis court, these are the model homes, and I am... If you were able to pull up, you'd be able to see the models that we use, that we're building. Okay. Did it, did it come through? No. Is the internet here? It says it's not connected to the internet. Okay, but that's okay. I'll show it to you right here. I'm sorry? How did I get the internet? Uh, get a uh, guy on a mobile phone. Yeah, or I get a, I still can't get it. Uh, we just have to check your chip for you. Okay. What? You can't get it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm still still adapting. Yeah, I think they need to conduct in so much business. But um Okay, Jack. Let me Okay. This right here. is this. Okay. That is a vocational school. The clinic is downstairs, the first floor, and the classrooms are above. Okay. You got me? Yes. Okay, let's move on. Where is this project at? Mitchell. Okay. <coughs> no, it's two miles from the beach. You know, but, but it's not like this. Yeah, you'll get used to this, but the project doesn't have um, that type of beach access. Ocean View family. Okay, now let's go to the, to the next. Are you able to sell a video or something, or we be able to get a video of stuff if we can't take pictures? Uh, I just usually post the video links on YouTube, um, on my YouTube page. You can just view them. Okay. Just trying to get a good view here. Structure is what we're building right. We're at the second floor of right here is this. The first floor is the jazz club, the um, Underground Railroad Jazz Club. Okay. And if you go to Facebook, um, what is it, um, Craig Norman on Facebook, okay. it'll pop up too. Okay. Mm, interesting. Underground Railroad Jazz Club, professional okay. office up. Right. That will become our home office. Okay. That is right there. 
Okay. And you can see some of these views on the website. Yes. Yes, family. And that's, um, repeat the website one more time. Um, www.stadiumviewestates.com. Excellent, family. So, family, there you go, family. So, family, what we're going to do is wrap it up, and then we're going to get ourselves organized, and we're going to continue on the ancestral memorial wall. Lunch was great. And then we're going to come back up and wrap it up, and then we're going to head back to East Legon. So, brother. Model number one. Model, that's actually model number three. Smaller model is and model number two is in the middle. Now, square footage. Model number three is five thousand square feet, five bedroom, three and a half, five bedroom, four bath. Mm -hmm. good, good, good. Model number two is four thousand square feet. It's four bedroom, three and a half bath. Model number one, the small model, is 3,000 square feet. Okay? One level or two? This is one level. All the others are two. Okay, now the next question Miss Real Estate is going to ask, well, how much? Right? You sure? Are you sure? Uh, I thought somebody going to ask that question. Okay, and by the way, it's on the website. The pricing is on the website, but since I'm standing right in front of you, I'll tell you. This is one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars. This is one hundred and ten thousand, and this is ninety five. So it's ninety five, one ten, one fifty. One fifty is the five bedroom, right? One fifty is the five bedroom. No, I don't have one fifteen. One one five. There you go. So family, those are some of the information that's on the website that you can view and you can get a yes, better HOA. look at the is layout. The HOA fee. Yes, the HOA fee is $85. No. $85 a month or a year? A month. $85 a month. Let's just say a thousand. What does it what does it cover? It covers security. It covers a 24 hour security. Trash. Um, it covers um, the maintenance of pool, maintenance of tennis court, maintenance of clubhouse, and your usage, one, two, three, four, the, those are Airbnb units. And you get two weeks on in an Airbnb, one of the Airbnb units. So when you bring your family, they all they you get that you stay there oh, nice. and you get two weeks that's for free. Don't come in my house. Go over there. <laughs> yeah. that, 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 that's. Rent out my house for Airbnb. If you want, yes, it's your property. You can do what you want. And what about this grass thing? Grass thing? You need to cut grass. It's not included. No, no. Matter of fact, good, great. You have to cut. You have to maintain your rear yard and your side yard. Side yard is five feet, rear yard is 25. You must maintain that. We cover your front yard and landscaping. We don't want we don't want you to deal with that. We will deal with it because every time somebody doesn't do their part, Jackie is going to complain. I'm with it because it's your property value. So we make sure that we keep a um, homogeneous society. Okay. Oh, by the way, um, over here is the playground and tennis, um, not tennis courts, uh, barbecue grills and picnic areas. We have that there. This is where the elementary school will be. And the designs of that is on the website also. So I just said $2,000, I just said here, get you and then my name on the little town and I leave. You going to take care of everything for me if I say do it, right? Absolutely. But, but, but wait, no, 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 let me say this. Now, as far as opening a bank account, no, but if you want to do anything with this land, I will, we will do it all and make sure you have all your papers, all your documents, all registered. Because what I can't have and sell this is have you being cheated. Exactly. Or what I can't have it 
Because if I do that, we never get that. If we don't get that, I got to go. I'm broke. I, I'm all in. If I can't get this thing built and done, then the game is over. So I have to make sure that everything I tell you happens the way I tell it. That's, um, I have to make sure it happens. Now, I don't do the bank account. I don't, but I can help you, but I, I don't do that. But as far as the land project goes, you ready to buy land? Then I'm your guy. We'll who's carry helping you. you. So my, I'm sorry. Who's helping you? Who's helping? I have a company. I got, I got a few people. Name of the company is C.A. Norman Limited. By the way, can you take a picture of this gentleman? He's one of the land buyers himself. Uh, yes, this and is I'll, Mr. Ronald Jess. Uh, greetings, uh, brother. Okay. So, so you want me to add a little something? Well, you can do whatever. This is yeah, we. Okay. Well, before we, uh, Craig, uh, what I want to do is just give uh, your contacts. Uh, they didn't display properly, uh, even though I know we gave the site. Just uh, give them uh, their contacts to communicate with you. Okay, man. And then we just have the brother just add okay. a few minutes and Craig then we close Norman. out. Phone number uh, is um, 057-012-0606. That's phone number. Okay. Um, the email address is C A Norman Limited at Yahoo.com. C A Norman Limited at Yahoo.com. That's email. email. Perfect. Perfect. So let me get the. This is one of. Yeah. The, yeah. This is a, a video. This is a YouTube video. Let me let me let me know if I I'll, I'll stop it if it don't work for you. I mean, I was just going to tell him about the area. I, I went over there this morning. I was just going to All right, cool. Uh, this is all, all good. I can. All right, so Craig, I appreciate you, brother, uh, sharing all those uh, information. And we're going to wrap, wrap it up, family. And like we said, family, we're going to head back down and show you some more uh, of the memorial wall. Appreciate you, brother, always. All right, next time you come, we go to the site. Oh, absolutely. That sounds right. definitely good. I appreciate it. Site. And we'll see a lot more be in place and everything. All right. Appreciate man. you, brother. Absolutely. All right, so family, that's my good brother Craig Norman. And so uh, uh, we have that project in Winningba, and also we have this project here um, that we're looking to connect them with some good people. So and it's all good. We just want to make sure that you're comfortable and you're getting taken care of based on your standards of what you're looking for. Appreciate you, brother. In good partnership, we're going to keep this going.